This is the final of the three parts on the transport of water in the xylem of plants. In this part, we'll be talking about the transpiration tension cohesion hypothesis for how water gets transported from the roots of a tall tree all the way up to the highest leaves in that tree. All right, so we finished last time with talking about how water could be put under certain types of conditions, very strong negative pressure potentials. And the best evidence suggests that this is how trees are moving water to the tops uh, of their bodies. And here's how it works. Let's start over here on the left side of the slide and just look at the pressure potentials that we have at different points in the body of the plant. So air, depending on how humid it is, usually has a negative pressure potential of somewhere between negative 10 and negative 100 megapascals, so very strong negative pressure potentials. Now, if we go from that outside air inside of a leaf here, we can see that leaf leaves can have up to negative 7 megapascal pressure potentials inside of them. And the reason that their pressure potentials tend to be much uh, lower than the ones then that you find outside in the air is because inside of the leaf, you almost always have 100% humidity uh, because of the water that's evaporating off of the surfaces of the, le of the cells inside of those leaves. So here's what we've got. Uh, water comes flowing out of the stomata of the leaf into the air. That creates a, a negative, even more negative pressure potential in here. And that in turn ends up causing water to evaporate from the inside of the cells that are inside of that leaf, mostly the mesophyll cells that we talked about in other lectures. And at the cell wall, usually leaves have about a negative one megapascal pressure potential, okay? And so the evaporation of the water and the movement of the water out of the leaf causes water then to evaporate from the surface of these cells. And as that water evaporates, the cohesion, the hydrogen bonding of those water molecules inside of the cell pull other water molecules right next to them. And that ends up pulling in a chain the water molecules that start down here in the roots all the way up through the xylem to where that leaf is here. And the pressure potential becomes less and less negative as we move down here. And the main reason for that is because the xylem walls, uh, the, at least the certain parts of the xylem walls, uh, the uh, cellulose is hydrophilic. And so the water is sticking to the xylem vessels uh, as, the, as uh, it's moving up there. Just some part of the water column is sticking to that vessel. And that creates resistance to the movement of the water. And so the pressure potential becomes less and less negative until we get all the way down here to the roots. So this, to me anyway, is pretty amazing because it says that two things. One, that the water is being moved up the plant without any kind of active process at all uh, on the plant's part. There's just evaporation taking place up here in the leaves, and then the water just gets pulled up by those uh, more negative pressure potentials at the higher parts of the plant. Now, this works out very nicely for the plant because what it means is the plant has to uh, exert absolutely zero metabolic energy to move that water up the plant. And if you've ever picked up water, water is quite dense. It's very heavy. Uh, a gallon of water weighs almost nine pounds. And so for every gallon of water that that plant transpires, um, if it's tall, it has to lift that water from the roots all the way up to those leaves. So energetically, this is a really excellent way of moving uh, water up to the top parts of the plant. So where is the energy coming from? Well, the energy is coming from the sun. The sun shining on the leaves causes the evaporation uh, and the movement of the water out of the stomata into the open air. So the plant is basically using energy, heat energy from the sun uh, to drive all of the water movement in the xylem that we see. Okay, now we're not going to talk about the osmotic potential, but we do need to talk about the matrix potential. And the reason this is important is because it has a big effect on the plant's ability to get water out of the soil as the soil dries. Okay, so what is matrix potential? The matrix potential is produced by adhesion 
of water to non-dissolved structures, so to things like the xylem vessel walls and to soil particles. Okay, so cell walls, membranes, soil particles, all those things have matrix potentials. And matrix potential can only be negative, it can never be positive. Pressure potentials can be positive, but matrix potentials can only be negative because they're reducing the ability of the water molecules to move freely when they adhere. The adhesion of the water to these surfaces is preventing it from moving freely. Okay, so matrix potentials can be pretty important in soils, not usually inside of a cell, but they can be very important in soils. Okay, and the, the drier that a soil gets, the more negative the uh, matrix potential is in the soil. And so water that's very close to the surface of the soil is tightly bound by hydrogen bonding. And that this in turn makes it harder for the plant to get water out of the soil as it's drying. And the drier the soil gets, the harder it is for the plant to get additional water. And in clay soils, because clay is very, very fine, most of the water is very close to the surface of a soil particle. And so plants have particular problems of getting water out of clay soils, even when they feel moist to the touch. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So here you've got a soil particle in brown, and you've got water that's sticking to itself cohesively around that, and then very close to the surface of that soil particle, you have adhesion, okay? And so what that means is that the tension due to adhesion is greater close to that soil particle than it is out here. And so initially, when there's a lot of water in the soil, the, uh, the plant can pull the water off of the soil particle that's out here pretty easily. But as the soil dries and that layer of water gets thinner around the surface of that uh, soil particle, then you've got stronger and stronger tensile forces drawing the water to the soil particle, making it harder and harder for the plant to pull the water off of the surface uh, of that soil particle. So here's a way of looking at it. Say you've just had rain and the field is now at saturation. Here the plant can get water pretty easily. Then eventually you start to get less and less water here until you get to a point where the water is all very tightly bound to these soil particles and the plant can't pull it off, pull the water off of those soil particles at all. And that, that is the point at which you start to get wilting in plants. Okay. Now if the tension in the xylem, the, wa the water column in the xylem, becomes too great, it can actually cause that water column to break. And when it breaks, we call that cavitation. It forms a kind of embolism inside of the water column. And this can be disastrous. If things get too dry, uh, uh, then the plant can experience lots of cavitation. And if it can't reestablish uh, a connection there, what will happen is the parts of the plant that were being served by that water column will end up dying because they can't get water anymore. And you also will see there's an ecological effect here. Plants that live where it's very dry tend to have smaller diameter vessels than plants that live where it's really wet. And that's because a smaller diameter vessel makes it harder for uh, cavitation to take place. And so natural selection has led to smaller diameter vessels in places where uh, the soil is drier and therefore the plant has to put more negative pressure potential on that column to get the water out of the soil. And this again is why we end up with tree rings because in the spring the, uh, the soil tends to be much more wet and so you get larger diameter vessels there because the water column can be supported. But then during in the summer, what we end up having is drier soil, and so the plant then produces these smaller diameter xylem vessels here, leading to rings. Now, in the tropics, especially the humid tropics, where it's rainy all the time and water availability is not a problem, you don't get rings. And so, uh, in many parts of the tropics, you can't date trees by looking at their tree rings because they don't get rings uh, forming in their wood. And this is just a close-up of uh, several rings. So you can see here's spring, summer, spring, summer, spring, and so forth. 